Hello, Cyrus Slash Peter from Cyrus Gaming Spot here. And just chiming in this disclaimer here. Note that we are going to go full spoilers for the Sun Hill 2 video. So watch at your own discretion. Either watch if you have either played or seen the game on YouTube. Or if you don't particularly mind spoilers. So yeah. Well, here's the video. Hello, Peter from Cyrus Gaming Spot here. And for today's video, since it's the month of October and the Halloween-y stuff, you know, I thought it'd be fun to talk about Sand Hill 2. And I got two of my good friends here to uh, talk about Sand Hill 2, especially since they played the game before and beat the game before. I got Swordfish1390 here and Daniel uh, Santos here. Wait, that's your last name, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I just know, I just rubber you mostly Shintai, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most, most of the people that knew me before as Shintai, they, they always trip up. <laughs> it's okay. So, it's yeah. like a reflex. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Silent Hill 2. Now, there's a horror game that's pretty famous, uh, like, in all the g gaming, really. Uh, I, I would go as far as to say that it is the most revered horror game in the genre. It's like the most, uh, it's at least sure. the most revered Silent Hill game, I think, in the series. It is the most revered of its in the series, but yeah. I would go, I would go further and say it's the most revered in the genre. Yeah. Like, I, I can't think of any other, not to say that there aren't other great horror games, mm -hmm. but... I can't think of any other horror game that is as analyzed and dissected the way that Silent Hill 2 is. Mm -hmm. It almost like dominates horror discussion like for games in general, honestly. Yep. Yeah, I've actually like thought about doing video on Silent Hill 2, but it's been discussed so much. It's been like picked apart. I almost feel like Ah, oh, what 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 can I add to the discussion? Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, it's just beating a dead horse, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> at that I mean, point. You know. But then I see like a yeah. video. Uh, I saw a video by a guy where he analyzed the the way that the game uses mirrors and how that ties into the story. And then seeing that was like, well, shit. If somebody can make a like a fucking twenty minute video about like the narrative significance and thematic significance of fucking mirrors <laughs> in Silent Hill of 2. Of all then, things. <laughs> then, like, then that that kind of, like, reinvigorated me. It's like, yeah. you know what? No, there, there's still things to talk about. <laughs> so, I guess we should start with our history of the series first. Like, for me, I don't have any history of the series. Silent Hill 2 is, yeah. like, my first Silent Hill game that I played. And I played it because, like, so many people talked about it. And, like, I thought, like, oh, might as well just play through it since like like i played like resident evil 4 i know that's like an act like sort of action game the point was sort of horror so oh might as well, uh, i guess i should play an actual horror game then so i decided to sign hill 2 because like like i said a lot of people talked about it and my friend who i play along uh on streams like was up for it too so yeah okay Mm -hmm. I gotta start somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. I heard you guys uh, uh, talking about it too before, so yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, Take my interest in it as well. Okay, cool. I my personal history with the series was I uh, had an uncle, and he loved picking up shooters and horror games, and like you know, he was the kind of person that like he bought like Call of Duty like day one, like he was that kind of guy. And like, same with horror games. He liked buying like Resident Evil and, you know, Silent Hill is one of those series that he liked picking up and playing. So I remember being really young at the time when he picked up Silent Hill 1 on the PS1. And I never, I didn't beat it at the time, beat it later. But like, I was never able to beat it at the time because I was, I was like in middle school. So... <laughs> At the time, that that game was, like, the scariest fucking thing I'd ever seen in my life. So, like, it was way too much for me to handle. And then, like, after a certain point, he picked up Silent Hill 2. And, again, I was still pretty young at the time. I was in middle school. So, like, 
it was still too much for me, so I didn't really get far in it. And then a different uncle actually got me Silent Hill 4 as a present. And I really liked Silent Hill 4. At this point, I was in high school, so, uh, you know, the, it was still scary, but, like, I was able to handle it at that point. And I think that was what really inspired my love for the series. And I retroact- mm-hmm. retroactively went back, played, beat all the games. Okay. That's pretty cool. You, I think <clears throat> so. My memory goes back to I think my dad had picked up a copy of it like when it came out. So I want to say it was like 2002. So I was probably like nine. And my memory of it is kind of uh, spotty. You know, I would watch him every now and then, but I really only remember bits and pieces. I actually have more vivid memories of watching him play Silent Hill 3. And then, like, for me, that was like the scariest thing in the world at the time. So I remember like years went by like it was when i was like a like a senior in high school i cannot for life me remember what possessed me to do this but i just decided to. i was looking at my shelf i was like you know what game i haven't beaten yet silent hill 3 so i put it in i beat it and it was still scary i was i was like 17 or 18 so it was was still a scary game and then i decided to because we had lost our copy of silent hill 2 like years ago i don't know what happened to it then i decided to pick that one up and then um that was pretty much it. So I think my my love for it started like in high school. Like I want to say like 2012 probably it's with uh, three, and then I went back to two, and then then four. I got four. That one took me a while to get through. That took me probably like three or four tries to get through for multiple reasons. Um, yeah. For yeah, <laughs> that, that could be its own video, really. So, um, but yeah, then I yeah I I, I tried one. One was it one where it was a little just. It was too jank for me, so I decided to watch a Let's Play of it. I just I enjoyed it a lot more that way, and I appreciated it for what it was. And uh, yeah, so that's yeah, I'm pretty pretty big fan of this. I know that, so to, to say that the ones after four hit or is uh, are divisive is an understatement, but <laughs> I think yeah. they got it. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> You mean you don't like downpour? <laughs> oh man, best one in the series, man. Uh, I, I, sometimes I like to call it downcoming. <laughs> yeah. So going to Silent Hill 2, you know what's the thing that surprised me the most? What? Just how liberal you can be with shooting your enemies in that game. Because like, for most of the game, I just shot most of my, the, the doll thingies. Or like enemies in the area and I was- uh, The mannequin? Yeah, the mannequins. And oh yeah, yeah. Out, out of various enemies you uh, come across, and I didn't really got an ammo problem, which I thought yeah, was kind of surprising. Yeah, the pretty generous when it and comes I played, to I, and I play on a hard mode as well. So yeah, it's oh, a little more forgiving. Okay. Why the fuck did you play the game on hard mode? <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> what? What do you mean? Why not? This is not a. This is not a gameplay driven experience. This is this game is about. The atmosphere. It's about I, uh, the spooks. It's about the story. It's I not thought, about. I thought I thought hard mode would add to that because what, what's more scary than facing an enemy that can kill you easier? You know? No. <laughs> <laughs> Very different ideas of horror. But, you know what? You know, you know, like, think... because like if you can't kill an enemy easily, then you will run from it. But that wasn't the case in Side Hill too. Because like, even a hard mode, I I didn't feel like uh, much of an ammo problem. Like, obviously, I didn't kill the enemies that would respawn right after, since there are some spots where you enemies would just respawn after uh, going to the room again. I remember you um, you messaged me because you yeah. were like, "Hey, I'm having pr- uh, a trouble with this one segment. Maria keeps dying." I was yeah. like. Oh yeah, I was like, that you know what? You know what? You know what's the difference? There are several differences in hard mode. You know the boat when you go and going to the lighthouse to go to the Lakeview Hotel. Yeah, 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 yeah. To look uh, the lake. Yeah, you have to use both joysticks in hard mode. Oh really? God! Huh. I did not know that. That yep. sound, I mean, that that's that moment is just just torture in general. So that yeah. just sounds. And then like there are. I think there are like some instances where the hard mode just feels very, very frustrating. Like the Marie chase scene. Like you and Soar, like I talked to you both. You said you just gun it and then you're able to get through it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's not the case on hard mode. You do have to make sure Marie don't get too many, too much hits or 
you just she dies ah. and you get she dies before the elevator and then you get game over okay. and then I'm, I'm guessing on hard mode they reduced her her health so yeah. that it's Oh, that sounds so awful. you have so you, terrible. So, so you have to shoot Pyramid Head like a bunch of times it, it's, to, it's slow, so, to slow him down. It sounds like honestly, it sounds like hard mode is just a worse experience <laughs> from what I'm hearing. <laughs> oh, you know, car, the cockroaches, uh, they damage you. Oh my God. That's how I got my first game over. It sounds miserable. <laughs> you you picked the worst way to play this game. I feel like if I if I did that on my first playthrough, I, I feel like I would hate it okay. if I hadn't already played through it like six times on normal. Okay, uh, so what about what about the the puzzle mode? Did you? Oh no, put, just normal you, mode. Just normal mode. Okay, you so you left the puzzles yeah. on. Okay. Like I know I you like, like the I, like, I like 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 I heard like hard mode puzzles got you to go in like through Shakespeare plays or something like that. Like yeah, like, oh, that was that was Silent Hill three. Yeah, oh. yeah, that was. And and math too. You got to do math okay. and Shakespeare at the same time. I, I I know you like to challenge yourself, Peter, but like I think you also need to understand that this is a a series in, where the 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 gameplay is is a means to an end. It yeah. is it is just a vehicle with which to yeah. express the narrative. It is like no literally no one that. Whenever people talk about the Silent Hill games, no one brings up the gameplay. No one talks about like, oh man, what oh, a that fucking combat awesome system. Combat system. Like, that's, <laughs> it's not what the, the point of the series. You know what else? Like, like I never expect Silent Hill to be map the game, because you're constantly looking over your map. Yeah, that is true. I, but, uh, but I do like the map system in the game. I think it's really cool how like, you have to find a map and then when you get the map, uh, James will like mark the paths, like the doors he's been through, or mark uh, places of interest. I think that's really cool. And then later down the road, he'd like uh, create his own maps, which I think is yeah. also really cool. So like, I think I, the I... map system is really, really immersive, for lack of a better word. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I I would also say that uh, I think an underrated aspect of the games that people kind of meme on is, is that like all the doors are locked. Yeah. But I actually like that because I, it makes for me it, it feels like whenever you do find a door that isn't locked, it makes that moment mm -hmm. feel much more significant. You're just like, oh wait, this one's open, and. You know, either it's a way to progress, mm -hmm. or it'll lead to like a a key item, or sometimes you'll just get something good out of it, right? You'll get mm -hmm. some ammo, you'll get like a health drink or something. So, like, I think it does. I, would, I think I like it does. Do I think it does like help with the exploration aspect of the game, like finding mm -hmm. the right door, like also mapping your way through the game and trying to figure out which door leads somewhere which door is just broken or which door is locked so you have to pay attention to when you get a key so you can backtrack to it yeah yeah uh and even though i was saying like gameplay is not really the reason to enjoy these games i will say that i do think the exploration itself yeah. is the strongest gameplay uh element of the of these games next to probably like the puzzles but the puzzles a little more uh hit or miss yeah. and it really depends on like how much you like to do like puzzles. i do think there are some gameplay moments that is very tense and interesting in sign hill 2 like the mm -hmm. whole segment where you have to in the hotel where you have to store Put your, your equipment boy. in the locker just because yep, at, at, at the elevator somehow doesn't take more than one person's weight <laughs> even yeah even, <laughs> even the flashlight <laughs> You can't even hold like one little thing, yeah. right? Like the I think the only thing that you can hold on to is, is your like, the photo of Mary. Yeah. I don't think that's it. Oh, is it? I don't know. I just took. I just gave everything. And then like I, th I think I think the photo yeah. of Mary is like literally the only thing you can hold on to. You still have the map, but yeah, yeah. But uh, I want okay. So like, and then, you, and then you have to go through like entire segments without your equipment, which really does create this really tense moment especially before if you were just gunning everything down like i did well i wasn't gunning everything down i just like gun enemies down in the main 
areas that were basically kind of like dungeon areas like the hospital the underground prison that was on top of the museum the hotel and you know the like areas like that in the like overworld i just ran past enemies yeah that that makes you're, sense mm -hmm. you're typically better off because honestly you don't really gain anything killing mm -hmm. enemies then Silent Hill 2 is kind of like, it's, like there are some areas in the dungeon areas where uh, enemies don't respawn if you kill them but some uh, areas are do respawn when you do kill them so it's kind of trial and error uh, deciding when you want to kill your enemies because like sometimes you do want to because you want to actually um, explore the room that you're in and like find ammo, find maybe keys and stuff like that I guess yeah, that's, that's how I felt when I was playing for Sanyo 2. Right on the lower difficulties, mm -hmm. enemies stay dead. No. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I'm learning about hard. Honestly, <laughs> it sounds like a very <laughs> different experience. Yo, man, you know the double pyramid head fight. According oh, to how according to my friend, they're faster in hard mode. Cause like he's he's seen me flick. Like, Were they always that fast? I think they're faster in hard mode. <laughs> And uh, they take a lot more bullets. A lot more bullets. Yeah, because they just nor in normal they just like trudge around, like they yeah. just kind of like walk at you. In a like very I had to, pace, but... I had to uh, take advantage of strafing and camera focusing in order to get through that fight. Because like just like without being able to manipulate your camera, just dealing with it like normally, it's very, very frustrating. Because like. It, like for most of the fight, if you just run around and felt like holding L2, uh, you can't see where they are because of the camera system. Like with the default camera system. Interesting. So yeah, I yeah, played I'm, hard I'm mode. Never, I played hard I'm, mode. <laughs> I'm I'm never playing the game on hard mode. No, no honestly, the, the, I any uh, inkling I had of even thinking about it has this has put me off completely. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, it's so divorced from what yeah. I like about the game. Yeah, it, it's like it's like counter to what I love about it. Yeah. Speaking of the enemies, so the the enemies have um, personal significance to James. So I want to ask you, Peter, what's your take on that? Like, what did you what did you think these enemies meant to James? I don't know what Daddy meant to. Um... Uh, well, but to James, okay, let's see. Abstract Daddy is the yeah. exception. Yeah. She, that that enemy is specific to Angela. Yeah. Uh, I've always been bad at analyzing uh, like uh, this stuff, so I okay. didn't really get much out of it. Okay. Do you, okay. Um. So the first enemy that you face is called the Lying Figure. Mm -hmm. It's the one where. Uh, it, it looks like they're kind of like in a straight jacket. Uh, it froze up on you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one, yeah. So, don't you think it's kind of weird that it looks like it's wearing high heels and isn't a thong? Oh, I, I can't. I, I couldn't even see that. <laughs> I couldn't even see yeah. That. Yeah, think <laughs> about it. All right. And now I want you to also think about like the, the one that's all legs. Mm -hmm. Like the, the two legs on top, two legs on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. All right. There, there, there's like a running theme with a lot of the enemies, except for like Pyramid Head and mm -hmm. obviously Abstract Daddy. Yeah. It's kind of like its own thing. Mm -hmm. The point I'm trying to make is like they're all very feminine. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, the, okay. leg, the legs literally look mm -hmm. like, you know, women's legs. Yeah. You have this, the nurse. Mm -hmm. The nurse is kind of like has, you know, the fucked up face, but like, mm -hmm. you know, has the cleavage. Yep. The point that I'm trying to make is that all of these enemies are reflective of how uh, James feels about Mary. Mm -hmm. Or, Duh. you know, the, or in the nurse's case, at least, it's an, it, it is an implication that he might mm -hmm. have been unfaithful to Mary. Hmm. Right? Yeah, that, or, even, or, at yeah. the, or at the very least thought about it. Yeah. He at least thought about it, because mm -hmm. thinking about it, He's he's always in the hospital, and he's he's always seeing his wife, who is very unfuckable in her current state. No, 
But what is he seeing all the time? He's seeing a bunch of other nurses who are mm -hmm. attractive. It's the, I, I like that the, the game never explicitly mm -hmm. states one way or the other, mm -hmm. but you can kind of like put two and two together yeah. and figure it. Another cool thing about the nurse one monster. Scene, um, with Angela, where like, uh, a, 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 right after you defeat the abstract daddy, yeah. Angela's like, you know, like, he bas she basically accuses him like, you, you probably got tired of her and, you know, found someone else. And then she just kind of like walked out of the room. Yeah. And James very pathetically just says, no, I would never. Like he doesn't. Mm. He doesn't even put up like a really okay. strong rebuttal. He just kind of like very limply just goes like, "Oh, mm. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't do that." So, mm. just you know, just mm. the game kind of like making these implications, but not like outright stating yeah. it. So okay. you know, yeah. I, I I think it's really interesting. No, okay, yeah. But yeah, that, that's another really thing too about the the nurse. Another uh, another little uh, little um thing about the nurses I noticed is like whenever you kill one they always like whenever they fall down they always end up having their like legs spread open in a very like suggestive looking manner too that I thought was oh, that's like... a good point mm -hmm. that's a good point um there's also the, the all the the weird stuff that pyramid head does with the legs oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah like he's technically like very, if, we're, if we're talking about very specifically what he's actually doing he's just kind of like rubbing up on them like mm -hmm. he's not like He's not actually doing yeah. anything to them. Mm -hmm. It's just like, like grinding on top of them, really. Yeah. But but at the same time, it's still very creepy and weird and sexually suggestive. Yeah. But then it's like, well, how is it sexual, though? Like, can he do that? Like, I don't know. It's supposed to get you thinking. It's supposed to get you, like... And I think it also speaks to, like, how our minds tend to fill in the blanks of mm -hmm. like what we think we see you know like particularly uh the first time we see pyramid head do that with the the mannequin legs and uh james is in the closet which is like a very voyeuristic thing mm -hmm. now i'm i think that's actually a reference to a david lynch movie i think i think it might be wild at heart or mahalan drive i don't remember which but that that is like a callback to that outside of that it, it is also you know there there's there's something voyeuristic about it even though they're monsters mm -hmm. but still there there's uh, james is kind of implicit in what he's witnessing and is he's he's become a part of something that is sexual and mm -hmm. strange and yeah. uncomfortable and you as the player because you're kind of experiencing it through mm -hmm. james you know also feel kind of the same you feel kind mm -hmm. of icky about it and also plus pyramid head is actually the only of the monsters that doesn't have any kind of feminine traits to it like all yes. the other monsters are female whereas mm -hmm. pyramid head is literally you know male the male figure yeah. and then yes and okay so i wanted to ask then peter you so you know when you fight you start fighting two pyramid heads right yep okay why do you think there's two of them at that point when when uh, throughout the entire game, there had only been one pyramid head, but now all of a sudden, there's two of them. I'm not actually sure. Okay, uh, Sword, do you know why? To be honest, I don't know if I was able to, to catch that yeah. one. I was pretty perceptive for most of the game, but I think that one got uh, okay. went over my head. Okay. So, uh, th so for most of the game, there's only one, and the only time you start seeing two is after James kills Eddie. Because now, James has killed two people. Oh, oh. shit. Pyramid Head is a representation of James's mm -hmm. guilt for murdering people. Oh, yeah. That's right, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I forgot about them. Yeah, that's right, okay. You know, I, I just thought about it, but like anyone that's listening to this that has never played Silent Hill 2 is probably like the most disjointed, like this game. Who's yeah, that? they're Who probably like, they're Who's probably like this. Who's they're that? Like, they're like, this game makes no sense. <laughs> but then again, like, I imagine you're going to put like, spo yeah. spoiler alert, yeah. you know, like, yeah, just don't watch game. this. Yeah. Unless you've played it already. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, and we're, we're kind of getting into like some of the deeper yeah. stuff, but like, I, I want to ask Peter. Like, do you like the game? Like, you beat it, but like, I I, I don't know what your opinion of the game is. That's it. Like, I think I I really like my time with it. I think the atmosphere okay, of the game is really great. Uh, especially like how the game's always shrouded with 
uh, the least like fog or darkness so like mm -hmm. you're always unnerved to wondering where you need to go and enemy designs like even though i didn't get like the great implication of it i think i was still equally creeped out by it i do like yeah. i do think <clears throat> uh the characters were eerily interesting especially once you get like more further along with it uh james is like like i think the voice acting helps the original voice acting i'm not sure about the voice acting that we they got yeah we don't we don't, we don't okay. need to talk about the <laughs> voice acting i think the voice acting does a really good job painting james as this like very um a meek guy at the start he like doesn't like he doesn't even know what's going on he just got a letter of murder of from mary it was to find out what's going on with that Mm -hmm. and then they just meet all these other they seem like kind of normal at first with um <clears throat> angela and then you meet eddie and like i think the biggest mystery uh is what's the little girl's name again laura laura yeah laura and overall i just think it's an incredibly uh good horror game in regards to the story implications as you get further and see how uh Sign Hill is portraying like uh, each person's personal hell and I think the atmosphere is great the enemy design is great the gameplay is um <laughs> I think it's decent there's like it's good in some instances I think like some of the scripted moments is really really good and I liked overall the over exploration of going uh from like just mapping out where you need to go and stuff like that yeah, yeah. i think the best way to describe the game like is get, that uh, it gets the job yeah. done and i think the game does a really good job of immersing you in the experience though i like how there are like if it's too dark you can't actually uh look at your map or interact with stuff i think that's really neat and adds it adds to the fog and darkness mechanic the game tries to portray around you. I think the puzzles, like, well, like should to say, some of them are hit and miss, but I think I enjoy at least a good amount of them. The one where I think it's kind of mad is like, uh, spinning room, the spinning puzzle thing, and then you have to decide. That, I think that's just trial and error. Uh, yeah, I remember. The, there's some puzzles which I think is neat, like the one where you have to figure out which coin goes where, or like the uh, music box puzzle was pretty decent, I think. I kind of feel like overall gameplay is, yeah, uh, I guess supplementary. In yeah, Silent Hill too. Like, like like it like it helps get you absorbed in overall yeah. game strong point, which is the story, the atmosphere, and just uh, figuring out what's going on, with James. And why he's seeing the things he does, and why the game's steadily getting wetter as you go for the hotel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I liked it. I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad. I wanted to bring up something very specific. So in the general chat, um, mm -hmm. I posted this picture. I'm sure you remember this scene from early on in the game. Oh, yeah. That's like the start of the game, right? That's like the start of the game, right? Yep. So, this is going to sound like a weird pull, but, like, you remember how, like, Persona 4 is about, like, beating your shadow? Oh, yeah. Facing your true self. Yeah, facing your true self. Mm -hmm. So, that is not just something that P4 came up with. That's mm -hmm. actually, like, a psycho... Not psycho, mm -hmm. a, a psychological... Um, field of study the the jungian shadow is mm -hmm. what that's called yeah so i feel that this image in particular is like the game pretty much saying like right from the get-go that's what this game is about yeah. the whole game is about james looking at himself and facing his shadow yeah like for most of it he doesn't know like he doesn't even remember what he does he's just like trying to run from what he yeah. done mm-hmm yeah, because he's he's so in denial, mm -hmm. like because of the trauma and the shock mm -hmm. of, you know, killing Mary, that like he has deluded himself into believing that she died three mm -hmm. years ago. And the that's 
also an interesting detail because he feels like she died three years ago because that's when she first contracted the disease. Mm -hmm. Even though she's only been dead for like, as far as we know, she's only been dead for like maybe a week. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's the thing. I think they do like the the amnesia like uh, trope really well with yeah. that, like with the suppressed memory. I think mm -hmm. that, I think that was a really they handled that really well. Like I already, I already heard of the ending because <laughs> yeah, how can you not? To be fair, how I mean, who not? hasn't? How can you not? <laughs> who hasn't heard that by now? But I was still like very um, invested in how the story would portray that reveal. Uh, build up to it. I think it was done pretty well. It, like yeah. it totally, it definitely recontextualizes yeah. everything you thought mm -hmm. you knew about James. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because James's character, like you said, in the beginning, he seems like a normal guy. Yeah. Like and so kind, like, kind of meek, uh, unsure of himself. Kind of. He he seems to be like the most normal guy, which I think is better reflected in the. PS2 voice acting than the redone voice acting because he's voiced by Troy Baker. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no, Troy, no, don't get me wrong, no. Troy Baker is great, but he's, he's not, not what I imagined to be. He's not James. <laughs> he, he's not what I imagined to be like the meek every man. You know? Agreed. Agreed. He, you got this meek man and he sounds like Joel. Yeah. Yeah, so weird. <laughs> it is. But like, I, I, you know, a lot of people complain about the voice acting, and I feel like a lot of those people kind of miss the point. Like everyone like, is, uh, everyone I think is supposed to feel off with the original yeah, voice exactly. acting. They're all, they're all damaged in yeah, some the, way, like how, like, how like, normal do you expect them to sound? Like they're just supposed to feel like, uh, there's something off about them, because like, like yes. because like, there is something off of them. Well, even from, even and, James. Yeah, with James, with the whole Mary situation and how he killed her. Uh, yes. to like Angela, she, Angela with her, her father, dad, yeah, and daddy issues, yeah, Eddie because he actually killed somebody. I think, yeah. well, well, Angela killed her father, well. yeah, Angela just killed her father too. But like, Eddie is like, um, seems like he enjoyed it. Wait, did, did Eddie kill that guy or did he? I think he shot him, I think he killed his dog, yeah, and yeah. then he Eddie, shot the guy, yeah, yeah. yeah. dog, and he shot the, the football coach in, uh, mm -hmm. in the leg, yeah, and then uh, Eddie's person I feel less sorry about. Because he's a dog killer. He deserves it. <laughs> yeah, he automatically hurt the shit. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's funny when I was, you know, helping my sister play SH2, mm -hmm. when she found out that he killed the dog, she's like, that's it. It's time to die. <laughs> Any sympathy <laughs> gone, gone out the window. She was like, like the moment, like uh, a poor animal was in. Was uh, was hurt. She was just like he needs to die. That this this guy <laughs> deserves no quarter. The only one who doesn't so like is like a damaged individual. From my point of view, is like Laura, and she sounds like pretty like normal out of all of them. Yeah, 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 yeah like her with Laura. Yeah, mm -hmm. which I think like and, and actually uh, yeah, they, they kind of imply that um she sees Silent Hill as just like a nor in yeah. the normal town it is mm -hmm. that it's just like a nice rustic town. Mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily think she sees it as a rustic town, like or like or as normal, because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's abandoned. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure nobody nobody's lives here. Yeah. Anymore. I'm just saying, like she's like probably the only. Or that it's all not like all run down and, yeah. and uh, you know. Like mm. she she definitely doesn't see any monsters, and she definitely mm. like whenever it goes to the other world, mm. like she definitely doesn't see any of that. Mm -hmm. Oh hey, I'm gonna lock you in this room, James. Nothing's gonna happen, right? <laughs> Nothing. Uh -huh. I tricked you. <laughs> <laughs> Open it up, you little fat. <laughs> <laughs> the bad. the great thing about this game though is that it it can be looked at in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many different interpretations and mm -hmm. a lot of people take different things from the story mm -hmm. and the, the, the characters. You know, we're saying how like the characters, you know, like the the, the voice acting is is intentional, and it yeah. feels like everyone's kind of broken and damaged. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something that doesn't get enough appreciation, like the mm -hmm. the voice acting in particular. Mm -hmm. It's like I like think, Jason, the, yeah, I'm like, sorry, go ahead. Like I think the voice acting fits because it fits with the overall tone and uh, uh mm -hmm. theme of the game. 
which is like showing showing how Silent Hill is like uh, showcasing these very broke individuals their own personal hell. Yes, exactly. And like, like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're all trauma. Yeah, uh, they're uh, traumatized. But the only normal one is Laura, and she's able to go through the town effortlessly, or what yeah. seems like effortlessly. And I think what I love about it too is the fact that I feel like every time you play it, you you just pick up on different things. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like yeah. when I compare my first playthrough to like my whatever like fifth or sixth playthrough that I did, mm-hmm. I feel like I have completely different perspective mm-hmm. now than I did when I first played it because I'm always noticing something new. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes it like really yeah. special. I just play it for the first time, so yeah. You know, like like we were saying though, like the characters, uh, like they they're supposed to sound like they're a mm. little, they're you know mostly normal at first, but a little off. James, for example, when he has that first conversation with Angela, Angela has like a weird quirk where she keeps saying "my mama" and then she like corrects herself. And she's like, "Oh, I, I mean my mother," you know, and she tries to warn James. She's like, "There's something wrong with the town." You know, and he's like, oh, whatever, that's that's fine. She's like, I'm not lying. And he's, he responds, no, I believe you. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly his voice kind of gets kind of dark. And he's like, I guess it just, I don't really care what happens to me. It's little moments like that, like, clues you in even early on. Even if you may not catch it, it you're, you're still being clued in mm-hmm. early on. That Like, yeah, something's wrong. Mm-hmm. So, something's off with James. And I really do think that that's, that's like, yeah. intentional voice direction yeah. that's not like on mm-hmm. like that was by design like a little little subtle cues by the voice actors like that mm-hmm. and how angela like literally she talks like a child like her, mm-hmm. her vocabulary like like the mama thing like she she's i think she's like in her late teens early 20s and she talks like she's like like she's 12 mm-hmm. and you know and then you know the trauma she went through that does tend to kind of hamper your development like that when you're young mm-hmm. so, so yeah that's you, like, the crazy thing that. too about angela she looks like she's like in her 30s Mm-hmm. And the, and the actress that portrayed her is actually like in her, was in her thirties or forties at the time. Mm-hmm. They intentionally casted an older actress, and despite the fact that the character is actually pretty young, like you said, you know, sixteen, like in her late teens, early twenties, something like that. Is actually, really? I think she's in her teens, not even twenty. Is she really? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't tell. But from yeah, the that's character. the point. Oh, yeah. That's the point. They wanted you to think she was older than she was. And I think the what they were trying to get across there is how the, her, her trauma has affected her. Because I, I don't know if you were able to suss it out during your playthrough, um, but Angela was raped by her father. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I figured that. Yeah. Like, later. Yeah. And, yeah, just imagine what mm-hmm. kind of, like, trauma that would do to a person. Like, yeah, it's no wonder she mm-hmm. looks like she's in her 30s, you know, after being mistreated in that mm-hmm. kind of way like that's just not that's not something you just bounce off yeah. from like that's serious psychological trauma and uh, you know it, it got to the point where like she murdered him in response mm-hmm. yeah. I think uh, Maria is another very interesting yeah. character to, in how she kind of has like she kind of has mm-hmm. like a little bit of an identity crisis in a way and then she kind of bounces between acting like Mary and then acting like Maria and then yeah. she wants to be like she literally says, she's saying, "I want to be whatever you want to be," or like, "Are, I'm, are you married yet? Yeah, if you want me to be, I am." Like she, and, and then mm-hmm. she's like, uh, she always acts like she's like, "Oh, can't you see that I'm real? I'm not a ghost. I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm standing right here." So it kind of makes you wonder, it's like, it's like, if, is she, how how aware is she even of her like true nature? Because I guess you could say she could qualify as like a quote unquote monster of Silent Hill, yeah, in a way. So kind of, you know, I, I think she she's a very fascinating character to me with like how she like kind of like identifies herself. And like she has like Mary's memories, it seems like, at least to a certain degree. Like when she's like in mm-hmm. the opening cutscene when she's like, oh, that tape we made and uh, when they're at the at the hotel. So kind of no, kind of makes you like I always wondered, like, I, like, what was you guys thoughts is like if she like how much of Mary's memories does she have? Does she is she like fully cognizant of like what she is? I don't know, I always kind of bounce around between that. Um, I feel like she isn't cognizant, but... Uh, do you play Born From a Wish? The uh, I started it, and then I, I didn't oh. finish it. I feel it's like... For sure, you yeah. should just like, I, I, go I watch, back. I'll, I'll watch a playthrough of it. The, after I beat the game. Like, if I feel like she isn't cognizant of her 
of what she is like f at the start, but she does gradually grow. Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree with that. Yeah, like, you you born from wish is like super short. You can finish it in like a sitting. Yeah, like the playthrough for it is like an hour. So yeah. Oh, yeah. then I I probably just dust dust off mine. Okay. Just doing give it a shot. I might as well. I feel like like Marie, if Pyramid has a manifestation of James wanting to punish himself, I think Marie or oh, Maria is like sort of him trying to like run from his past. I, I always know. personally saw Maria as like his idealized version yeah. of Mary. That's kind of what I always mm -hmm. took it as. Yeah. But so did you see all the endings? Uh yeah. Okay. So you know that uh, there is an ending where James leaves. Yeah, just, just leaves the uh, Maria, yeah. But when he does, he has a cough. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Implying, yeah. implying that like James made the wrong decision, mm -hmm. and that history is just going to repeat itself, mm -hmm. right? Like he's he's just going to come, he's just going to be right back in Silent mm -hmm. Hill. He's going to be going through the same thing again because, you know. Because he, he's basically just accepting the fantasy yeah. rather than confronting reality. The yeah. whole point of the journey is for him to confront his shadow. Mm -hmm. And instead of learning to accept himself yeah. and, you know, what he's done, he's chosen yeah. instead to just like uh, to deny it and to just, uh, you know, keep indulging in yeah. the fantasy instead. Yeah, like I feel like... Uh she sort of like pyramid head like i said like a manifestation of him wanting to just run away from the fact that he did kill Mer uh, mary even as a yes. i think mercy kill because no so um james uh he he killed her because yeah. he wanted to like escape yeah that like, like, like part, part of it anymore. was she part asked of, yeah it wasn't a part of it because even i remember in one of the endings mary was even like well if that's the case james then why do you look so sad so yeah. i guess that that's also partially true but yeah, yeah partially uh, like, james, part of it like yeah. he did want he wanted to just escape he felt like he shackled her as well i think yeah both both, both are true yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, one is selfless yeah. one is selfish yeah. yeah because like when mm -hmm. when you're dealing with someone that is passing away mm -hmm. like it's it's rough because it's a it's a drain on you in multiple different ways, like emotionally, psychologically, physically, it just wears you down. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you just kind of feel like you just want to end, which is kind of like a fucked up thing mm -hmm. to like to deal with, because like this is someone that you care about. But at the same time, you can't deny the fact that it's like it's it's taking so much out of you. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is, you know. And that's basically what, like, what James is going through. And it's like, so yeah, when he kills her, it's it's not for any one reason. It's for all of those reasons. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, he still loves her. Yes, he, he was also hurt by her. And yes, he wants his life back. And yes, he also feels bad for her and doesn't want to see her suffer anymore. It's all true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not just black and white, like, oh, it's yeah. kind of, like everything, multiple things can be true at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And plus, I mean, like, we even get a little bit of a taste of it at the end of the game when he's walking down the hallway in the hotel and we can kind of hear a memory of her, like, berating him and, like, just telling him to leave that, like, this and that. And then, then he leaves and then she, like, begs him to come back. So I could see why that would be, take, like, a mental strain mm -hmm. on him, too. Imagine dealing with that for, like, three years. Yeah. And because you know, in no way would I ever you know condone his actions. But at least when you when you kind of like, like put it's, everything, it's in understandable. It's, it's, uh, yeah, you understandable could understand why he would go that route. Mm -hmm. I think. And there's also the ambiguity of like, mm -hmm. well, she kind of she wanted it too, like mm -hmm. she because she was saying that she wanted to die, but then mm -hmm. she also saying that she didn't want to die. That she, you know, she She's wanted like she to, wanted to live with James though, because she loved mm -hmm. him, but. She also like like she's uh, like her like disease was like sort of like hurting her men like physically as well as mentally i would imagine as well like i'm sure for her it got like whatever pain she was experiencing mm -hmm. got to the point where she genuinely wanted to die just mm -hmm. to to get it over with just like to end the pain but there at the same time she also wanted to keep living because she, you know like who doesn't want to keep yeah. living 
Yeah, nobody mm -hmm. wants to die. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. So and, it, it really, know, yeah. yeah, it's not it's not a black and white yeah. scenario. It's you know, yeah. you can kind of look at all sides and see, you know, it's kind oh, of yeah. the brilliance of it. Yeah, yeah, that's why I like. I think Side Hill Two is really has really interesting characters. The form of James, especially. Yeah, mm -hmm. like and that that's what makes the game so engaging. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, it's why people 20 years later are still talking about this game. It's why we're talking about yes. it right now. Yeah. It's resonated like, with so many yeah. people in so many different ways. And I feel like a lot of people could even probably relate mm -hmm. to certain things about it, too. So I think that's what makes it such a but like, honestly, I, I go as far as to say that Silent Hill 2 to me really is a work of art. Yeah, it really is. So as we talk about endings, how uh, do you know how to get the different endings in Sonic Hill 2? I will say that the methods of getting them are really out of the way, and yeah. so like most of them, I you I, I there's no way I you could get them without a guide. Like there is one where yeah. the Marie ending requires you to be like near her on most of the time, make sure she doesn't get hit, stuff like that, and I think that's just not viable in hard mode. And then, uh, really, if you really want to really get hard. the, if you want to get the ending, like you don't if want, you want her to, if you want to just do leave, the opposite. And it, it, yeah, you it, have to. If you want to just leave, like you have to keep James in good health and stuff like that. And, and you have to periodically mm. go to the menu and look at the photo. I of love Mary the right Mary, Yeah. Like what? That's yeah. so strange. Yeah. Like, I I got the, um, was it uh, in the water ending? In the in the water ending because like I feel like that's yeah. the ending most people. That's the get ending. That, that's the ending where James you make James act suicidal, and you do that because that's how yeah. you mostly play video games. You just go through taking hits sometimes. Yeah, I think that you also got that though because you were playing on hard mode because <laughs> like you were constantly. That definitely was a contributor. <laughs> It's definitely a contributor. Like, because my sister played the game on the easiest setting, uh, so she was able to get the the leave ending, because of course she did. Like she she almost never took damage, so <laughs> her, her health was always up. You know, like she she was healthy for, for most of the playthrough. I guess like, she didn't get killed by a cockroach for her first death. <laughs> yeah, no, she I, actually she didn't die a single time. Right. I've died quite a few times. I said, like, I died, like, you know the first Pyramid Head encounter? Like, I died that quite a few times. Really? Oh, oh, when you got like, kind of, like, run around circles yeah. around them and... Yeah, uh, like, getting used to the camera system was a bit iffy at first, I think. Because, like, it's sort of a combination between, like, forced camera angles and... actually ch changing the camera angle, kind of? It's kind of weird, I think. I, I'm not sure how to best describe it. But yeah, like, the, the camera it, can be unwieldy, yeah. Yeah, it like, it's, yeah. Yeah, it can. Yeah, some sometimes the camera can get a little mm -hmm. weird. But like, I think it's at its worst at the double pyramid head fight. But for most of it, like I got used to it. Uh, I don't think it's much of a problem, and it might just be a problem for me there because it's hard mode. So yeah, take that. For I mean, your your experience with the game on hard mode is a decisively different one. It honestly sounds like I, I, we play two different games to the point. I show, <laughs> I show you guys how to beat the final boss, right? Wait, oh, yeah, I, saw, I saw um, I saw your post. <laughs> Why, wait, what did you do? I just tank hits and heals and just use the giant knife over and over again. Oh, wow. OK. <laughs> I mean, if it works, it works. It works. I thought I, 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 me and my friend, like, oh, this never go to work. Oh, it worked. No okay. good. That's fucking funny, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is. And also, like, weirdly ironic, because like, the the great knife is Pyramid Head's weapon. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's got kind of like a poetic irony, right? There, <laughs> unintentionally. Yeah. Yeah. Like it. It is James. Fully accepting what he is in that moment. <laughs> He's embracing it. <laughs> He's becoming Pyramid Head. Like, I am. Yeah. I am the shadow. <laughs> he didn't conquer the shadow, he became the shadow. He is the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> I have the shadow. The true, true self. <laughs> Yo, imagine games in Persona 4. Oh my, you imagine that fucked up dungeon? Yeah, we mm. already went through it. We it's called Silent Hill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But like, I, I'm just like thinking about like every time a P4 character is like, you're not me. James would just be like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would. And then the shadow's gonna be like, oh, oh, wait, we're supposed the to have a big boss like, fight. Wait, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> we're supposed to have a big boss fight first, don't you know? Oh, oh man, I would love that. <laughs> that needs to be a skit. That that skit needs to be made by someone. So yeah, you have our, yeah. you have our blessing if you're watching this. So. Hey, any <laughs> any up and coming artists, go <laughs> and just go for it. We're giving you a funny idea. Just fucking do it. <laughs> oh. I want to talk about the sound design and music because I think this game does a great job of making me feel very eerie and like, like you're just in this creepy ass place dealing with these monsters getting your way. I think like the sound yeah. design especially does a really great job of unnerving you. I just love like the industrial like, yeah. banging sounds and things like when you're when enemies approach you and the sound of your radio yeah. and. It's just, oh, I think I, I, I think I like, I, like, I like how different the game feel when you leave your radio in the locker. Mm hmm. You go, oh, yeah. This feels weird. This is when there's enemies. Yeah, because you're you, you have the expectation yeah. of like hearing it when there's an enemy nearby. So mm -hmm. when you just see an enemy, you're just like, oh, you're not supposed to be here. Yeah. And like, because uh, you've, you've become so complacent, yeah. you know, yeah. and then. Like I said, I played this game with my friend, with him watching, and he said he even got unnerved, uh, and he played it before, so, yeah. It's actually kind of ironic because, like, the, the sound of the radio itself mm -hmm. creates, like, a sense of unease, but then when mm -hmm. you become so complacent with it, the lack of it becomes, mm -hmm. like, gives you that, uh, that yeah. like, unnerving feeling. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, agreed, agreed. Uh, that, man, that's a Kira Yamaoka fucking, mm -hmm. what a boss just a legend in the biz and mm. his music in the game too is just it's that, incredible that like like when you when you wait at the title screen and you see like the uh i guess oh, i like don't the know opening that, movie yeah the opening movie i guess mm -hmm. like the the song for that is so good i i, yeah. I, I, haven't, oh, yeah. I, I haven't seen it my friend told me to skip it because that's spoilers in it so you gotta watch it now. Uh, you gotta not, watch not it. Not like the second, to. but after we're done recording, yeah. the song itself is just so good. Mm -hmm. Like the visually, like you've already seen everything there is yeah. to see in it, but like just the the song is just such mm -hmm. a banger. I, I have it on my Spotify. I, I listen to it like on my way to work. Them. It's a good song. It's really good, <laughs> man. Kiriyama Oka, I think he was he was really bringing his A game when it when it came to the Silent Hill series in particular, like. He's done other projects where he does like really good work, but I feel like the Silent Hill stuff is like, that's like he Yamaoka. Well, like I think this game overall is just like like sort of says a masterpiece. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. is. It is a work of art. Yeah. It's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, there it it's it's old now. There's some mm -hmm. there's a little bit of jank there. You know, there's some stuff that's like uh, hasn't aged super oh. well. You know. You know, but like, I was gonna say, uh, when I played through this game, my friend said, "Oh, like I'm saying, what's the safe spot?" Like, oh, you know, it's, it's really noticeable, man. The first safe spot is in a well. <laughs> yeah, that's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> I really like the description of the save, like the first time. Yeah you find one it's like oh it feels like someone is groping around mm -hmm. in my brain or in my soul yeah. or something like that's what it's great so... writing like damn mm -hmm. like i could honestly like feel the hairs on my arm standing up mm -hmm. when i read that the first time and it just like got me because it's such a creepy thing to, to even like think about if we're at, like a safe point of all things yeah <laughs> what other game you puts in the effort to give you like a really chilling text uh line mm -hmm. To save your game, I mean. But yeah, overall, I think this game's like you got some quirks you probably have to get used to. Yeah, yeah. kind of early two thousands quirks, especially if you're playing the PS2 version. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, like it's worth it to at least play for it once. I mean, I, I liked it from what I played, so yeah. Like I think it's a great game. When you well, yeah, I mean. It, what do you mean from what you played? You beat it. <laughs> I know. I didn't play through the 
a deal like the Born From Witch. That's why I said that. I just watched uh, it. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, Born From a Wish was added later. Mm -hmm. The original release of the game did not have oh, Born oh, From okay. Witch. Yeah. yeah, the greatest hits version of Silent Hill 2 had it included. Oh, okay. Uh, first, like, first, it was introduced mm -hmm. in the Xbox port. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when Silent Hill 2 got the greatest hits released, that's when they put it back on the PS2 version. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like it's great uh, yeah. playing through the main game. I think like just watching a playthrough of Born From Which is pretty interesting too. Um, so I want to ask as well, does, has this inspired you to want to play the other three games? Do you want to play SH1, 3, and 4 now? Uh, maybe down the road, maybe next year, not October. Uh, so you want to make it like an annual yeah. thing where like every every October you're going to play, play Silent Hill. Play Silent Hill. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you just I, I finished do think... two, so it makes mm. sense you want to break. Yeah. And if we're talking the other games, I really do think Silent Hill 3 is also deserves a spotlight. I think mm. that one gets overshadowed by yes, two so does. much. And I, I, mm. I love three. Per, I love three just as much, honestly. Three is just as good. I agree, but uh, don't sleep on one either. One is also very good. Uh, oh yeah, four, yeah. That, that has yeah. its own quirks too, mm -hmm. but it, it is it is something special. Uh, four is like I heard. I heard like you three. say I heard you you say four is very mixed and that it has a great first half, but yeah. then it tanks at the second half. I think that's what right. you said before. Yeah. So, Silent Hill Four, the first half of the game is phenomenal it's great like i think mean, it's, it's on par with the original trilogy the first if we're talking the first yeah. half specifically yes but the reason why it shits the bed in the second half is because the second half has you retreading all the levels that you just went through in the first half but now it's an escort mission and on top of it being an escort mission you also have the main villain like chasing you down and, mm -hmm. and making your life worse the one kind of good thing about it ab about like it being an escort mission is your your partner can't die however the trade-off is the more damage that they take the more likely you are to get a worse ending which is annoying and, and what's even uh makes it more like I guess frustrating is not only do you have the main villain following you around you also have uh like uh ghosts because it's oh, before they, right. yeah, they yeah, introduced right. ghosts, which are unkillable enemies, and then you'll have I, I, I won't I won't go into specifics, but there are these special kinds of ghosts, I guess you can say, that will literally follow you from one level to the next if you don't like stop them. Right. So there are these weapons called I think the Sword mm -hmm. of Obedience. So like, mm -hmm. you can use the sword on the ghost, and you can pin them down on the ground, and they're stuck. However, there's only there's like five. Very few of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, there's only yeah. five. There's very mm -hmm. few of them. Something mm -hmm. like that. And, so... you, you know, you need to basically either figure it out or use mm -hmm. a guide mm -hmm. to know, okay, which one should you pin or not? Because some, like Sword said, some will follow you, but some stay in, in their world. So, yeah, just, just okay. use a guide <laughs> and just like, you know, so you don't have to like, bang your head on the wall and just like pin down the ones that you need to speaking of escort missions i'll say this ashley is better than maria <laughs> that's that's not a hot take that's <laughs> I, I i never heard of escort mission problems in sound hill 2 uh, apparently it's a thing in hard mode man Bruh. yeah in hard mode because uh, on every other difficulty, you could for literally forget that she's there. Yeah. I mean, unless you're trying to go for the Maria ending, I guess. Yeah. Doesn't the Maria ending make you, uh, make you have to like, be near her and protect her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you have to like, yeah. baby her more. Yeah. But, like, Ashley is, like, a great yeah. character in our, like, she's, she always sticks like, behind I feel, you. I feel like she has the inverse problem. Where like Ashley is more our like that her personality can get grating at times, but she functions well, great in the gameplay. Okay, in the original RE4, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm just talking about the original RE4. 
I haven't played right. remake. I haven't played remake, so. Okay, because I was gonna say in remake, yeah, they made her way more likable. Yeah. Like I actually really, really like mm -hmm. Ashley in remake. She's, she's much cuter. Mm -hmm. She's much more likable. Um, she plays off Leon mm -hmm. much, yeah, much better. Like I just, I'm just basing my experience from the game I played, which is. The right, no, and I agree with you. She's, she's a lot more obnoxious. But then she and, functions great in gameplay because she she can actually like duck when you shoot at at uh, enemies. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I I totally agree. Like Maria, gameplay wise, Maria, like I think her personality is good. She's a really eerie and like intriguing character. But then her gameplay is the problem. You know, right. you know the chase section where you have to shoot the uh, pyramid head. Sometimes you shoot her by accident because she keeps getting in the way, Damn, and she can only take like one shot. Boom, dead. This hard mode woes. <laughs> yeah, fuck hard mode. Sounds like ass. It, like, I wouldn't say it's all bad, but like there's like really frustrating moments in there. I, I didn't. I, I don't. I don't even think like most of the boss fights are that bad in hard mode. Like, I think, like, uh, Daddy, Eddie, uh, pretty decent boss fights. I think the, like, ceiling one was okay as well. The ceiling boss. Pyramid Head is frustrating in terms, like, uh, you're not being able to see where they are in relation when you shoot them. And that's really important because if uh, they're close enough, they'll just hit you because they have spears and that's pretty fast. But once you like get used to strafing and just b keep holding L2 so you know where they are, it's not that bad. And I'm um, not sure about the Marie slash Maria final fight because uh, I kind of cheesed it. So yeah. By the way, after uh, when you have some time, there is a making of mm -hmm. video for Silent Hill 2 that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. That uh, it was made. I, I mean, I don't know who made it, but like okay. it, it was it was made like, you know, interviewing the the actual developers and, you know, it showed how they were making the game. Mm -hmm. And it, the, this was made around the time when they were making the game. So like, okay. you, 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 you get some like pretty neat, like, you know, inside baseball, like type of thing, like behind mm -hmm. the scenes type of stuff. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else to talk about Silent Hill 2? Like, I, I mean, so. we, could, we could be here all day. Yeah. But. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, just generally. I mean, I feel like we covered pretty much most yeah. there is to cover. Yeah, we covered the you know the the major points. Anyway. Yeah, the major yeah. points, like the, the, um, just our overall lying thoughts on the game. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fucking masterpiece. Yeah, it's one of the greatest games ever made. It's uh, one of the greatest horror games ever mm -hmm. made. You know. Yeah. It, it, there, like I said before, there's a reason why people still talk about it twenty fucking years later. This game's a banger. God, this game's 20 years old. Ugh, I feel, I feel old. old. <laughs> I feel old when I think about that. I, uh, I still remember the day that my my uncle, <laughs> you know, look, I I went over to to his place mm -hmm. and we were playing it, and he just like left the room with me mm -hmm. by myself to play it by myself, and I was just like, ah, <laughs> no. um, I don't think any of my relatives are like gamers, so it's just mostly me, myself, and I. <laughs> but yeah, oh, I think that's all for this video. Like we said, right. Sun Hill 2 uh, it's a is, a, is a fantastic masterpiece. So if you haven't Hell played yeah. it yet, uh, we uh, recommend you do. Yeah. Probably can, uh... Uh, get. I'm not sure what's the best version of the game, though. I played the PS2 version. PS2. Uh, the, 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 the best go. version is probably like the pc version patched with the the enhanced edition mm -hmm. like it's a fan-made patch that because the original release of the pc version is pretty bad so fans went out of their way to clean it up they added controller support they uh they fixed some bugs they the the, the game looks spectacular um on pc like it super clean and crisp image but still manages to like to maintain the the atmosphere of the original so that's mm -hmm. probably the best way that or i guess like emulating the ps2 versions yeah. you know those are probably the mm -hmm. two best don't touch the hd collection just don't don't mess with that it's it's trash to 
put it lightly. Mm -hmm. It's literally the only bad way to play Silent Hill 2. Every other method is is valid. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, except for the the PC version, vanilla. Mm -hmm. That's that's a bad version. No what? <laughs> well, uh, that's all for today's video. Uh, thank you for Shintai and Swordfish 390 for joining. And this is Peter from Cyrus Gaming Spot signing off. Hi. Take care, everyone.